Hi Bakers! Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can make your own custom ravioli, which I'm really excited about because I love pasta a lot. Um, so I'm going to start with the filling, which actually starts with some vegetable prep right behind me. So for my ravioli filling, I'm going to add a cup of vegetables just to make it feel a little bit healthier. Um, so I'm going to add some spinach, um, which you can add any green or you can not add greens, whatever you want to do. Um, and I'm going to add some onions and some mushrooms. So I'm going to get my onions and mushrooms started first. Uh, so I have big saute pans here. And when I saute vegetables, I want to add a little bit of fat to the pan. So you could add whatever fat you happen to have in your house. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil. You could use butter, vegetable oil, leftover bacon fat is delicious. Um, whatever kind of fat you have works just fine. Get that on high heat so it's heating up nicely for us. Uh, and I'm just going to cook those down until the onions have gotten really soft and they'll get a little sweeter, which is going to taste way better than raw onion in my ravioli. Um, and then the Mushrooms are going to let out some of their liquid and get a little bit more intense flavor. I couldn't get as many mushrooms as I wanted to at the grocery store. They were out. Um, if you have gone to the grocery store or you've heard your parents talk about the grocery store, you've probably heard that um, it's a little hard to get exactly what you need right now. So it's really great for us to learn uh, now more than ever how to be flexible. All right. So while this is heating up, I can go ahead and get my spinach ready. So I've washed my spinach and I've chopped it up really fine. Uh, I have a ton of it. Probably not going to use it all in this. I got this from the farmer's market and I figured I'd go ahead and do it all at the same time and maybe I'll freeze some for something else. Um, but I don't want to put it in raw either. So I'm actually going to uh, blanch it. So blanching just means putting something in hot boiling water, salted water, uh, very quickly and then shocking it cool. So usually you do that in ice bath. I don't really have any ice. So I'm just going to do it in cold water. It's not as good. Um, the colder you can get the water, the more bright green the greens are going to stay. I don't have ice. So it's just going to be cold water. So it might not be quite as vibrant. If you did this with frozen spinach, it's already been blanched. You don't have to do this process, but I got this from the farmer's market. So it does need to be blanched. So I'm just going to put this in boiling water just for a couple of seconds. And I'm going to do it a little bit less than I normally would, again, because I don't have ice water to cool it down as fast. But I got my cold water ready to go. And I'm going to do it in a little bit at, maybe try to get half of it in here at a time. You just want to go 20 or 30 seconds at the most. Meanwhile, this pan is hot, and I can go ahead and get all these vegetables in there. I'm going to go ahead and take, not quite, didn't quite come back to a boil yet, it's just another second, I'm going to go with that, take it out, get it start cooling down in my water, and then I will do the second batch. Meanwhile, I'm going to saute my vegetables until they get nice and soft. And then we'll move on to the next part. Alright, so here's my mushrooms and onions. They've been sautéing for a little while. You can see they're starting to get, well, you can see through the steam. They're starting to get a little more translucent. They're not quite done yet. Um, I was trying to multitask, so I'm actually going to go ahead and season now. So I'm going to add some salt. What happens with mushrooms is you add salt, actually, it actually starts to release some more liquid. Um, we don't want a lot of liquid in our filling, um, so it's great for them to release their liquid. Uh, I'm also, this is from a spray store, and I have some dried thyme. I'm going to add that because I think that's going to taste pretty, pretty good with my filling. Again, it's, you could literally do whatever you wanted to do if you were doing your own ravioli filling. Which is just kind of how I feel like I want my food to taste. So I'm going to keep letting these cook. I'm going to let those onions get really nice and soft. You don't really want to crunch into an onion. Uh, 
in the ravioli, that would not be super. Meanwhile, I want to show you the spinach. So, I took it out, put it in my cold bath, and then I uh, put it through a colander to get most of the water out. But, actually you can see too how much smaller it is. It's a lot smaller than what we saw at, at first. Um, but I want to make sure to go through and get any, well you can see that it's wet. But it actually like has, let's see if I can show you, a surprising amount of water still in it. So you really want to go through and squeeze all that water out. Make sure this is nice and dry uh, before it goes into the filling. Because what will happen is when you cook that ravioli, it will release all that water and it won't taste really watery. And obviously we really don't want that. Get all that water out. When I was growing up, my mom always used to do this with paper towels and trying to be eco-friendly. <laughs> Alright, so my mushrooms and onions have continued to cook. And they've kind of gotten some brown color and that brown color. Uh, definitely going to mean a lot of flavor, which is really, really great. I want you to notice that I cut these pretty small. Uh, whatever kind of vegetables you put in your filling, if you decide to put some in your filling, you kind of want to keep them small. I probably could have done them even smaller. Um, if I was doing this for a restaurant, I would definitely have done them smaller. But I'm doing it for myself at my house, so I do it a little bigger just to save a little bit of time. Um, but you don't want giant chunks of vegetables. Uh, this is going to be harder when you get down to filling your ravioli later. All right, so my spinach is all drained, and now my mushrooms and onions are cooling. And I don't want them to be crazy hot for the next step, um, so I do want them to cool because my next step is everybody's favorite part, and that's cheese. So you kind of need something to bind all this together, so it's kind of one big cohesive filling, so it's not just like stuff pieces inside of ravioli. You kind of want it to be like one solid thing. Um, so typically that's some sort of soft cheese and I'm actually going to use two cheeses today because that's what I have in my house. So the first one's going to be cream cheese, which you're all pretty familiar with. And then the second one is uh, goat cheese. So goat cheese is very similar in texture to cream cheese. It's a little bit crumblier, just a little, little bit than cream cheese. Uh, but it's got a little bit more of like a sour flavor when I was in college. One of my best friends described it as really good, only better. That's how great goat cheese is. It's one of my favorite cheeses, which doesn't mean anything because all cheese is my favorite cheese. Love cheese. Um, but you could use ricotta. Um, you could use, uh, oh my God, what's it called? It just like ran out of my brain. I'm gonna think of it in a second. Uh, but any kind of soft cheese would be, be really great for this. Um, you can also use like grated hard cheeses, cheddar, um, you can add blue cheese, whatever kind of cheese you want, but you still want to have some soft cheese that's going to really bind it all together. So I'm actually going to get these two cheeses into my mixer and soften them up together while I'm waiting for everything else to cool. You maybe have noticed that I haven't talked about amounts yet. Uh, that's because when I cook for me personally at home, I never follow a recipe. I think it's just because professionally, as a baker, you have to follow recipes to a T to make sure everything comes out perfect. So personally, I like to kind of relax and do what I want. So no, I don't know how much goat cheese to cream cheese I'm going to add. I'm just going to start adding some uh, and see what I think, see what tastes good. Maybe I'll add a little bit more of this, more of that. I'm just kind of winging it because for me, it's way more relaxing. I think right now for everyone, you just need to find a way to be relaxed. And it's very relaxing for me to just be like, oh, I'll just add some of this, some of that, it'll be great. So I'm gonna get those softening uh, in my mixer. Mascarpone, the cheese is mascarpone. So I got some goat cheese and some cream cheese in here and I'm just gonna let it go till it combines. I'm gonna taste it, see if I think it needs more cream cheese, more goat cheese, uh, and then I'll go from there. All right, so I've added some more goat cheese and some more cream cheese. Um, I didn't say this before, but if, if this was a perfect world, I probably would have used all goat cheese. Uh, but goat cheese is actually really expensive. So cream cheese is kind of a nice way to bulk up what you're making. Um, it has a kind of similar flavor to uh, goat cheese, but goat cheese is a lot more um, tart, a little bit more bright. 
I think pairs really nicely with pasta because pasta can be a little heavy, kind of lightens it really nicely. Um, so that's kind of why I added the cream cheese. I don't think I'd recommend doing only cream cheese, but I would super love for you to prove me wrong and tell me it's delicious. Alright, so I've added about half my mushrooms and half my spinach just to see what that looks like. I'm going to let that mix for a while. And just like with all my baking recipes, I'm going to scrape the bowl and make sure it's all evenly uh, incorporated. I'm going to see how that looks. Maybe I'll add more, maybe I won't. So here's what it looks like after that first addition. Um, if you're thinking, it kind of makes you think a little bit of spinach artichoke dip. If you've had that before, you're really not that far off. So spinach artichoke dip typically has cream cheese and spinach, of course, in it. Um, so you could totally add artichokes to this and t dice those up really fine. You could literally make like a spinach artichoke dip ravioli. That would be delicious. Um, I think I like, I like a lot of veggies, um, personally, mostly because... Right now, I'm just trying to stay healthy. It's really easy for us. I'm sure you're having the same thing where you want to snack a bunch. So as much veggies as I can get into my meal, uh, I'm going to do that. So I'm actually going to add some more, both of my spinach and my mushroom uh, and onion mixture. If this was for a restaurant, I might leave it about here. But for me, I'm going to add more. All right. So I'm happy with my cream cheese to goat cheese ratio. So now it's time to go ahead and add my spinach and my cooled mushrooms and onions. Now because I'm not following a recipe, I just cooked some. So I might have a little bit extra, which could be a great thing. So you could get really creative with that if you did the, if you did the same thing. So if I have extra mushrooms and onions cooked, that could be great on a burger or on a sandwich or in eggs and an omelet, um, anything. Uh, I think right now it's a great time to really think about that creative process when you're cooking. Uh, just because you have a little bit more time, that's kind of how I feel right now. I have a lot of kind of time to take my time and be a little creative. So if I have extra veggies, score. Uh, I'll put it into something. If I have extra filling, because again, I just kind of mixing some stuff together. I'm not sure if it's too much for how much pasta I'll have later. I'll have to get creative with that and see how I could use that. Uh, which personally for me is really fun. Uh, so hopefully you can be really creative too. Alright, so my filling is all ready to go, which means it's ready to be added to my pasta. Yay! Alright, so the filling is all made for the ravioli, so now it's time to assemble them. I'm going to show you six different shapes that we can make this pasta into, because I thought that'd be a little bit fun, more fun than just one shape. Um, so... Instead of using pasta, like actual pasta, we're actually going to use a kind of convenience product. Now, if you were to make real pasta, you'd have to roll it out crazy, crazy thin because it's really thick, it's really chewy, and it's not very pleasant. So pasta has to be rolled super, super thin. Most people use pasta rollers or pasta machines to do that for them. It's very difficult to do by hand. I don't personally have a pasta roller, and I'm assuming that you don't either. Um, so I'm going to show you a really cool convenience product that you can use. Um, here is my package. This one I got at an international market, which is why it's all in Chinese or something. Um, I don't know what language it's in. Although, ironically, it says product of USA. Um, so these are wonton wrappers. So if you've ever had uh, like a wonton soup, those little dumplings are made uh, with these as the wrappers on the outside. So we can actually use these because they're nice and thin. Uh, to be the replacement of our pasta. So saves us a lot of time um, and it's really nice and easy. So I'm going to show you six shapes. So I'm going to get six pieces out real quick. You do have to keep them covered because they do like to dry out. So you only want to pull a couple out at a time and then I just put like a damp towel uh, over top of them just to keep them from drying out. All right, so then I'm gonna bring it down here. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes, great. So I got my filling here, and you can see I already started, but I wanna put filling in each of these. So you don't wanna overfill them. Everybody wants to overfill, but you don't want to overfill because then uh, you won't get a nice seal 
and then your filling will pop out uh, and that would be really really sad you also after you've made your ravioli you want to wait a couple minutes before you try to cook them because you want to make sure that your seal is completely set so they don't bust open because again that would be really sad too and you can cook these just like you would cook uh, regular ravioli in boiling water it doesn't take very long because these wrappers are so so thin This was in the industry. I could either um, put my filling, if it was a little looser, I could put it into a piping bag and just pipe, pipe, pipe. Or I could use just like an ice cream scoop to divvy it out. I don't have those things here, or at least I don't have an appropriate size ice cream scoop. So this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm gonna run it along the sides. And this is gonna be my glue. You could also use egg, but Hopefully you all have water at home. So I'm going to do that for all of these so they're all ready to go. So I want to talk about why I'm showing you this because you're probably thinking this is a baking class. This doesn't make any sense. You didn't even make the dough. <laughs> well, I didn't make the dough because I don't have the tools. And um, But I did want to share this kind of savory application because, you know, I talk about a lot how so you have to kind of go back and forth between different sides of the kitchen. You know, pastry chefs often have to help culinary side and vice versa. I'll tell you that these kinds of small dumpling like things, this is what they're going to ask you to help you help them with if they need help. I know I've had to do it when the culinary side had people call out or whatever. What they're going to do is they're going to pick stuff that's similar to pastry. So this seems like something a pastry chef would be good at. So this is something they're going to ask you to do. So it's really good to be good at lots of things. All right. So my first shape that I'm going to show you is very simple. It's called a rectangle. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to fold it over. Got a little on my finger. That's all right. And I'm going to get these two to meet at the top. And then I'm going to push, starting where the filling and it is, whoopsie, got a little fold in there, that's all right. And then I'm going to push it out so you can see I got it nice and tight up against the filling so there's not any big air pockets. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, make sure there's no big air pockets. And that's it, that's my rectangle fold. Now if I want to be extra and make sure it's nice and neat, I can take my knife and trim my edges, make sure it looks really nice and clean. And that's my rectangle fold. Now for me at home, no, I'm not gonna trim up all my edges, but if I was in the industry, this looks a lot more professional, so I will do that. All right, so onto our next fold. Uh, our next fold starts with the rectangle fold, so I'm literally gonna do the same thing again. Again, pushing that air out around our filling. So it's our rectangle fold. Well, now I'm gonna take it another step, put a little water on my finger, and I'm gonna put it on these two corners. And then I'm gonna bring those two corners together. All right, so I kind of get a little hat looking guy. I think he's cute. So fold number two, let's move on to three. So this one is a little, is also pretty simple. So this is our triangle fold. So just like we did with the rectangle, except for instead of flat side to flat side, we're gonna go corner to corner. And then again, pushing from the filling out to make sure I don't have any air pockets. I got a little fold right there. You get a little fold right there. It's not the end of the world. Um, usually you have a couple seconds to fix it. Again, you could trim off the edges to neat it up. I'm not gonna worry about it, but if, uh, if I was in the industry, I certainly would. So there is our triangle fold. So now we're gonna move on uh, to our next fold, which is a variation of the triangle fold. So same thing again. Make my triangle fold, corner to the corner. Squeeze the air out the sides. I got a rogue piece of spinach. Get out of here. There we 
we go. Nice and sealed. So same thing as I did before, but here's our twist to this one. So I'm gonna wet my corners and then I'm gonna bring them together and I can either leave them straight, but I kind of like to cross them because I think that's really cute. So here's that shape. Another cute little different shape. All right, my next one, my edges are dried out a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. My next one is also a variation on a triangle fold. So very simply, just like I did, corner to corner. Squeeze out all the air. They look the same, right? So this time I'm gonna wet the center and I'm gonna bring my two corners in. And you get one of these guys. So maybe you see it, maybe you don't, but this is actually has the namesake of its shape. Any guesses? No? It's like no one's in here with me. It's like I'm all alone. <laughs> this is called an envelope fold. So kind of looks like, if I close it, it kind of looks like a closed envelope. If I opened it, tell you what, I would love to get this in the mail. But anyway, that is uh, an envelope fold. And then our last one actually takes two wonton wrappers. And this is actually how you would traditionally make a ravioli. So I wet my edges and then I'm gonna place the wonton directly on top and I'm gonna line them up with my edges. You kind of have to pull a little bit, create some tension. Make sure it gets all nice and sealed up. Got a little bit of air pocket, just push them out as you're sealing because we don't want any air pockets in our ravioli. This one's still kind of got an air pocket, so I'm gonna see if I can, there we go, release my seam and I can do that. So just like the other ones, if I want, I could take a knife I can trim up the edges, make it a little bit more even. Or if I wanted to, I could take this um, and use like a cookie cutter to make it into a circle or like a diamond or an oval or a dinosaur or whatever cookie cutter you might have, have at home. Might be kind of a cute thing to do for kids, a flower for Easter, you know, whatever you kind of want to do. Traditionally, it's usually a rectangle, maybe a circle. Um, little simpler shape, but why not do something else? So, same filling, same wonton wrapper, six different versions of what it could look like. So a lot of things that you could pick from. These are certainly not all the options, but this is what I wanted to show you today. Uh, I hope that you like it, and I hope that you find a way to make uh, some awesome food at home. Hopefully I'll see you soon.